What's something impressive you can What's do? Something unique about you. He Interesting. Feet in the air. Huh? Oh, I'm big brain. He's the smartest kid in his class. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest needs no introduction. He enjoys starting cults on Discord. Please give a warm welcome to the lovely, the talented, Lennox Albert Garcia. <laughs> Lennox, thank you for joining us on the pod. Uh, do you have a fun fact you want to regale? Yes. The people with. Go ahead. When you crack your knuckles, it's not your knuckles cracking. It's air bubbles being released in your knuckles. Oh. Is that what makes the sound? Mm-hmm. The what about the old wives' tale? So is that bad? Is it good? Is it just, it's it's neither here nor there? I mean, it doesn't really hurt my fingers when I do it, so I guess it's not bad. Well, didn't you, I remember as a kid, they were like, don't crack your knuckles because that will lead to arthritis. Yep, exactly. Did it? Can it? Well, I've been cracking my knuckles for 30-ish <laughs> years. I don't have arthritis yet. Yeah. But isn't arthritis inevitable for most people? I think, yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people get it anyway. Yeah. So it's not bad? Because I don't know. Correct. Dr. Nicholas and Dr. Nicholas. <laughs> uh, we're wearing white lab coats right now, and we say cracking your knuckles is not bad. It doesn't. It seems like it can't be good, though. Yeah, but will it have any effects on my fingers? Yeah, what if you? What if the air bubbles build up and build up, and suddenly your hands are like Thanos or something? Oh. Hmm. So it's good to crack your knuckles and get yeah. those I mean, air bubbles yes. up. My knuckles will probably really crack, crack even if you don't try. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes <laughs> just doing things, your knuckles will crack. My whole body's been cracking lately. Yeah. It's yeah. just getting old, I guess. Welcome to your yeah. mid to late 30s. All right, Lennox. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Your new Netflix series? Uh, where can people find you on TikTok? Nowhere. All right. <laughs> okay, well, uh, bye bye. <laughs> bye. And uh, oop. Okay. So, I went to a baseball game yesterday, a professional baseball game, and I took my darling stepson, Lennox Albert Garcia, who just provided us with that super duper fun fact. Because uh, we need a, a guy night. You and Luna are going to see Wicked on Wednesday. Uh, just you two. And I said, well, Len and I need to have some bro time. We need to do it out. Uh, and we saw the River Cats uh, and this from Wikipedia. The Sacramento River Cats are a minor league baseball team of the Pacific Coast League and are the Triple A affiliate of the San Francisco Giants. They are based in West Sacramento, uh, which is where we live and play their home games at Sutter Health Park, which is like two and a half miles from where we live. Uh and Sutter Health Park opened in 2000. It's relatively new. It's it's nice. It's really nice. And was known as Rayleigh Failed through 2019. Now, taking Lennox to uh, the game, he, he had no... He's not into sports. The traditional professional sports. Football, basketball, baseball. Uh, why, why, why is this, honey? He likes playing around for fun with his friends. Yeah. But he's never been on a team right and he's never been in a home where sports were watched or yeah. followed yeah so he's just not been exposed to it yeah and things are different now than when i was a young man uh when i was a young man sports were how you uh and uh, oop. how you wore your masculinity how you uh you uh puffed out your chest uh with pride to the to the tribe yeah. To to your other uh, guy friends in middle school and high school. And uh, I grew up in San Diego, so Padres and Chargers uh, was big fans of them back then. Uh, as I grew up, I became an adult and I realized caring about sports is, it's, it's, uh, it's, well, it's, it's nonsense. And it's really about money and people who put a lot of time and uh, care and passion and emotion and feelings into uh, adults playing a game is silly to me, but that's just my opinion. Uh, well, what do you think about uh, Lennox? Um, should do he? Because he doesn't. Do you, do you want to get him into little league? Do you want to want to play soccer? Luna yeah. played soccer a few years ago for one year. Luna right? played played soccer for one year. Yeah. Uh, they both did gymnastics for years, and then Lennox progressed from gymnastics to more of like a 
what's that ninja show? American Ninja. American Warrior. Ninja. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was in a little class where they did that, those types of like routines and um, climbing around on stuff and jumping and. Yeah. So he did those types of activities. Uh, I do wish he knew more about sports and had been exposed to it more. But it's not too late, I suppose. Yeah. It, I just don't know what to do. It's different now. I wonder, I mean, I'm sure someone has the numbers, but uh, the percentage of uh, elementary school boys who played organized soccer slash baseball slash basketball um, in 1982 versus now, I would think it's less. Um, do any of Lennox's friends... Yeah, a lot of his his peers play sports. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah, his cousin Lorenzo. Oh, yeah, his baseball. cousin has played on a baseball team since he was very young. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of their peers at school, both of the kids, uh, they do soccer or baseball or whatever. Hmm. Um, I never. My problem was always that I worked full time. Yeah. So I and all of those practices are during the week. Yeah. During the time I'm at work, and yeah. um, I. I, I didn't. I never had anyone trusted or close enough that I could have help me take the kids to their games or yeah. their practices. So it was really. It's always been a challenge for me to do both. Yeah, and um, you got to be old enough to get yourself to practice, I guess, because uh, we our parents were home. They were they were working, um, but it was I think from uh, nine ten, uh, we could hop on our bikes, ride down to uh, mm-hmm. the park, and practice and then come home at yeah six or seven or whatever yeah um so uh we walk in uh and instantly it's like sensory overload for lennox because he, he's never been to a game like he hasn't been to a king's game no he, the, he's never been to a professional sports game yeah of any sort yeah and i at his age i had been to a few because like i said padres um uh, have many fond memories of going to padres games that Jack Murphy Stadium in the 80s and 90s. Uh, so he walks in and it's overwhelming, like the amount of people, because they just opened the season three days ago, four days ago. So it was, and it, w- it wasn't full. And it's not like freaking a, a Dallas Cowboy Stadium where they could fit whatever, 60,000 people <laughs> in the venue. Um, but there were a lot of people. There was a lot of noise. Uh, there's a lot of visually going on. Um and so he, he just, we walk in and he's like, I want to look at the field. So we walk uh, just to, to the edge of the seats and look at the field. And then he just, he says, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I should be doing. And I was like, well, just, let's just walk around. Just, you just soak it in. Uh, do, you do your thing. Um, we had good seats. Uh, we had like first row on the first base side first baseline um it, but it was almost too good because you were like right up against the cement uh wall it might have been the edge of the dugout but uh and like that's where everyone was packed so i would have like i would have appreciated like more room to spread out um but we know about that uh next time uh you realize so lennox knows almost nothing about baseball so he's asking me a ton of questions and i'm explaining and I realized that uh, sports rules, and this goes for every sport, they're they're moronic. And how <laughs> they came up to, to this point in the rule, this iteration, uh, this version of the rule book, is just mo- is just idiotic. <laughs> so he's like, well, what's a strike and what's a ball? And I said, well, if the pitcher throws it to the catcher and the umpire deems that the pitch is hittable by the hitter... And the hitter doesn't swing. Or if he swings and misses, that's a strike. But if the ball is deemed by the umpire out of the hitter's range, then he will call it a ball. Unless he swings at it, <laughs> and then it's a strike. And I was like, this is really stupid. What am I saying? <laughs> like, how did they come up with this? How does any sport become mm-hmm. something? uh so but but then like the other part of me is like uh well a lot of sports fans are not very smart let's be honest (laughs) they're not very bright so it's easily you can grasp onto the rules and and the concept uh you just gotta like soak it in and live with it uh for 
a little while. Um, so, honey, uh, they they start out. Uh, they sing "Star Spangled Banner." Uh, oh, say can you see? Ever hear of it? <laughs> yes. Amber waves of green. What do you do while the Star Spangled Banner is playing? Because I hadn't been in a baseball stadium for many years, and uh, and they got some Sacramento girl from some TV talent show to sing, and some people booed her. Like, what? oh my gosh! You know, they were like. Whatever her name was, Carolyn Nicholas from America's Got Talent. Boo! I was like, okay. that's so rude. Yeah, uh, but what w- what is what do you do? I ooh, I don't remember either. It's been so long. I think you're supposed to stand up and put your hand over your heart. Yeah. Or is that for pledging allegiance to the flag? <laughs> I, or does it both? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember. I am. Or or do you do you when you don't the pledge of allegiance? You don't like. Put your hand on the Bible on one hand, and then one That's hand, like, like when, when you're taking the oath of a, the, court. the Supreme Court, right, right. Uh, but uh, I forgot what to do. I looked around. Some people had their hands over their heart. Some people didn't. So uh, I just defaulted to my American side, aka my Republican side. I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm kidding, people. We're all friends here. I just I put my hand over my heart. You know who didn't put their hand over their heart? Who? Darling stepson, Lennox Albert Garcia. Okay. <laughs> so he might be in an Antifa and I'm going to have him doxxed. Did he also boo the singer? By the end of it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was, I was like, well, uh, Len, uh, why? Well, he was, he was standing at attention and that's, that's all I can ask for. And I didn't know what to do. So I was like, well, maybe he's got it right. And I'm looking like the moron. Um, uh, so, uh, oh, so, uh, the cost. Um, we avoided parking, thankfully. You were our our Uber. Uh, like I said, we lived two and a half miles away. Um, but uh, bought a couple drinks. And so for two drinks, one was uh, a tall boy of Bud Light, which is 20 ounces. It's more than a regular beer, 12 ounce, but it's less than two. So a beer and a half. And, uh, and a large Sprite. So two drinks, two frosty beverages. Came to twenty three dollars, and I was like, "What the heck?" <laughs> Which, by the way, is the cost of one of those tickets? Right, right. Ooh. It's madness. How how are they pricing this? I don't know. And how, how do how do the uh, the Sutter Health Park employee food employees how do they keep a straight face when I'll take one beer? Yeah, it's fifteen dollars. How how do they? <laughs> How do they not like cringe or I'd be like, can we lower the price a little or where's that profit margin going? That is insane profit margin. That'll cost you one hour of my wages that I'm earning right here. Yeah. Yeah. Th- those jobs. I'm I'm not super familiar with those jobs, but I know those jobs. Uh, they're they're low paying. Uh, lots of temps agencies. They don't make a lot of money. I'm right. pretty sure they make minimum wage or barely above it. So, uh. A fifteen dollar beer, and they're making hand over fist uh, with with each beverage. It blows my mind. We also got fries. Uh, fries weren't so bad. Lennox's fries were six bucks. Mine were eight because I got garlic. So a few pieces of garlic is two dollars. Um, but they were actually really good fries. We both enjoyed them, and a bit on the high side. But uh, at Capital Bowl, uh, the West Sacramento Bowling Alley. Their fries were seven bucks. Although that was like mm-hmm. a plate. It was a huge serving yeah. size. These fries, Lennox ate them and he's like, I want more. <laughs> I wish there were more. And I was like, me too. Uh, but they were yummy. Um, the The whole thing is, uh, the entire experience during the game is cashless and paperless, uh, which I appreciate. Um, uh, the paperless part, well, the cashless I, I get because hand, hand, handing money, handling nasty money. Uh, it just slows everything down. But the paperless, so when you bought the tickets, they texted me a link, and then I tap it, and I wham, bam, there are my tickets. But I thought, like, when I was a kid, and I had the paper tickets, it was something memorabilia. And it's low-rent memorabilia, but you could hold on to it for a little while. Yeah, it's fun. I still have a box full of tickets from musicals I saw in London. Really? 20 years ago. <laughs> Where are they? Are they here? <laughs> They're in a box in our closet. So <laughs> what good are they doing me now? Right. Well, I don't know. It's just fun to keep and have. I think I have a few movie tickets too. Yeah. Yeah. Just for 
a little while, but then, yeah, I thought about the Padres games and how many of those stubs I have. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Zero. And if I did have them, <laughs> who cares? They could be sitting in our closet right now. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Uh, and, the uh, yeah, the the drinks, super overpriced. Food, a little bit overpriced. Um, I was just thinking, why can't we just pretend we're in high school and get drunk in the parking lot? Except the parking lot is $15 uh, to park there. And that oop. Okay. So Rivercats has this thing, and it's a mobile order uh, where you can place an order for food on your cellular telephone. And, well, I thought it would show up to my seat because I know, like, some teams do that. Some stadiums do that. You, you order whatever, and a, a, someone will show up to your seat. Here's your hot dog. Here's your Coca-Cola. Okay. But uh, it wasn't that. So first off, it's just a list of restaurants on, on my phone. And I'm like, okay. Uh but it, it it should geolocate you because where I ended up ordering was like the food stand that's directly across on the other side of the stadium. And it's not, again, this isn't like uh, the University of Michigan where 90,000 people can be held. It's not a huge walk, but it was, I, I would have liked, because there was a food stand right behind us, right behind our section. So if I would have known that, it would have been so much easier. Um, so right away had to walk super far to get it so place the order uh and then get a text a few minutes later your food's ready okay so and me and lennox we gotta hike it up <laughs> hike it halfway across uh sutter health park uh and right away there's a line and there's no mobile order pickup a lot of places you'll see the sign mobile order pickup uh, app order pickup right here go right here they didn't have that so i get in line it was eight people deep and it was taking forever. And I was like, oh, why Why would I order ahead? And so if if my food was prepared 10 minutes ago, it's getting cold. It's getting gross. And I'm here I am sitting in line. So finally I get up to the front. Uh, and the gentleman helping me, I said, uh, my online order, uh, my confirmation code is 1874. And he's like, oh, online order, you go to the end of the of the little counter there. I was like, okay. There's no signs, no anything. Oh my gosh. Walk over there, and there's already two couples there. Uh, and after kind of just observing and kind of chit chatting with them, I found out <laughs> the one couple, uh, first of all, the guy was wearing uh, his jeans, had a bunch of tears in them, honey. And oh. I was like, oh, he's up to no good. But I found out he was getting did dirty because uh, his lady was talking to me, and she said, We got two corn dogs that were cold. And they said they were going to give us two more corn dogs. And that was 20 minutes ago. Oh I was like, God. dang. And then the other couple uh, right next to me, me and the guy started chatting. And we're like, there should be a sign here. We don't know if there's no sign. So we wait in line for 10 minutes. And then, oh, you got to go down there. And there's another line. So it was just pure uh, mayhem and cheese. And the poor uh, employee who was helping us, he didn't have the food. So he was just left kind of staring at the little uh, opening where they slide the hamburgers down. Uh, the little window there. So he was just staring at waiting for <laughs> our food. And so it's me versus a uh, ripped jeans couple. And uh, the other couple, uh, we're all waiting for food. So the guy brings over a little tray. I'm like, please let this be our fries. Please. And I, I'm pretty sure the other two couples are saying the same thing. It's like, oh, here are your fries for Vince. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Those are Lennox's fries. Goes back, stares at the opening again. <laughs> And we're like, oh, who's, it was like a game show. <laughs> it was like, press your luck. We were like, who's, ne who's, ne whose food is next? Whose food is next? He came over, uh, garlic fries or Vince. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the entire process was, uh, littered with errors. We had, I, I ordered in, uh, in the app, uh, ranch, ketchup. I didn't care. I, we didn't have that. I was like, whatever. Let's get out of here. <laughs> the, the game had already started. We had wasted so much of our time. It was it was a fiasco. Uh, they they need to uh, straighten the process, for, uh, fix the process. Yeah. You think they would have? There needs to be some order. There needs to be some signs put up. Yeah. A little more direction happening. Yeah. And uh, the employee, it seems like, because you hear about the labor shortage, but from what I could tell, they had more than enough people so much more that one young gentleman was getting flirty with one of the uh, uh, cute looking gal customers. And I was like, why are they, why is he trying to uh, Mac? Get to work, sir. 
Good well, work, young man. I need my ranch over here. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. First world problem, but it was a pain in the butt. Um, but like I said, the fries were good. Uh, if they could, well, now they know order uh, something close at a food stand close to you or just go in line and sit there for five or ten minutes and you'll yeah. get your food right away and it won't be such a, such a, such a disaster. And that, oop. Uh, one thing I did notice as a former radio person myself, uh, Orphan Andrew, uh, who used to be on The End, which is a radio station in Sacramento, uh, he's the guy at uh, the River Cats games who does, uh, who between innings, they, they throw it, they have a camera on him, and he's up on the Jumbotron, and he's like, yo, 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 we, we out here eating nachos, or hey, we're going to give away some t-shirts in section 28, blah, blah. So he's like, uh, what, whatever that is, the Flavor Flav, or whatever, the hype man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's, his, that's his deal. Uh, and then also, I know that Rain, also formerly from the end, more specifically the Wake Up Call, the worst radio show in Sacramento, uh, he, he does the uh, MC, like, coming up to bat. Lennox Abra Garcia. So he does that. So uh, two former uh, radio guys who are well, doing uh, emceeing, <laughs> wacky, <laughs> circus clown uh, silliness. But I thought this minor league baseball games, this is where radio people go to die. And uh, oh dear! fun fact, I slid into Rain's DMs a year ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, cause I knew he, he was let go from wake up call or, uh, one Oh six, five, the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I knew it was unemployed. And so I slid into his DMS and I said, Hey rain, you want to do a radio show? Cause I think he's, I, I listened to him from time to time back then and he was okay. He was the one, uh, he was the most tolerable of that idiotic, uh, cast of nitwits. But anyways, uh, I, so I'm like, hey, Rain, do you want to, like, like a weekend show? I think it would be fun. Uh, a couple hours, a couple old radio uh, vets like ourselves. We could make some noise, make some waves, and have fun and do something with it. He never responded. And he blocked me. Okay. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Because he's a hater. Wow. It's quite the reaction, Rain. Because he's, uh, I don't know. Because he doesn't want to be successful in radio. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> because uh, he'd rather uh, work with Katie <laughs> and uh, make fun of their possibly uh, homosexual staff member. Anyways, uh, we left in the fourth because I was cold. <laughs> so like during the day, it was a beautiful sunny day in the mid 70s. And I was like, well, I'm cool. I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts. I'm like, eh, I can I can stomach uh, the, the nighttime air, but... Uh, at the fourth inning, I was like, "I'm cold. I'm 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 gonna get sick." And Lennox wanted to stay, but thankfully he uh, he he relented and uh, he let me go. He re- he really enjoyed it though. Like he was digging it, asking tons of questions, and <laughs> as my lover's hat falls off her head. Um, but a night game was the perfect move because you really like the lights. Oh yeah, um, so much fun. Yeah, it's it's quite the uh, spectacle visual. And uh, um, Sutter Health Park, you could see some downtown Sac uh, skyline for whatever Sacramento's skyline is. <laughs> but there, there you see some buildings, and it, it's got a great location. Um, it, was a, it was a good night. If I had worn a hoodie, <laughs> I almost wore a hoodie, but if I, if I had worn a hoodie, I would have stayed till night. And they had fireworks, too. I know. I know. But uh, You guys were there. I bet Lennox would have lasted the entire game. Yeah. Uh, had you not been so cold, you were there for quite a while. So when I picked you up, I said, what inning was it? And you said the fourth. And I was very surprised because I thought it would have been the sixth by then at yeah. least. But Yeah. Well, we got there just after six. So we had a half hour just of walking around doing nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, we, I, I want to go back. Definitely. Definitely. I want to go too with you guys next time. Maybe Orphan Andrew can be in our section. <laughs> and then I can be, hey, Rain, can you unblock me on Instagram? <laughs> R A Y N E. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Uh, okay. And uh, oop. Uh, one more note. Uh, in the, I think it was the third inning, near our, near the end of our uh, four inning <laughs> sojourn. Uh, 
Lennox was like, when I get home, I'm going to take a shower. And I was like, yeah. Because you, <laughs> you really forget how just dirty and nasty and grimy those seats are and, like, under the seats and the concourse, whatever. It's, they're not hosing that place down <laughs> after every game. It's nasty. It's disgusting. And that's exactly what happened. We both came home. Uh, we both took showers. That's also the first thing he said when you guys got into the car when I picked you up. Yeah. He just went, shower! <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was nasty, but <laughs> eh, it was it was a good time had by all. All righty. Well, are we done, honey? Yeah. All righty. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use a promo code for GoDaddy.com. We don't have a promo code for GoDaddy. God, ta, God, da, God. <laughs> it's Sunday. The Lord is on my mind. Okay, Liz Fisher. GoDaddy.com. Goodbye, my podcast friends. I love you. My wife and I love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, I may have said the wake-up call mocks their possible homosexual staff member relentlessly borderline homophobia but that's just my opinion where is the lie but i'm still a good person and we're still good people they do it constantly i know it's it's, un- it's uncomfortable it's bullying mm-hmm. and he doesn't say anything because he's a lower ranking staff member and he i know from uh embedded people that he's still part-time after whatever a decade makes barely any money and they mock him incessantly relentlessly and it's hurtful Mm -hmm. and if he's a gay dude he's a gay dude but geez take it down a notch yeah gavin katie it's okay (laughs) gavin just keep putting keep putting your children in their underwear on instagram just kidding oh my god He does. I know. Let's talk about uncomfortable. That's also... All right, we could go on and on. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm still a good person. I don't know. After that last comment, I question everything. Uh, And we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Thank you for caring. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Oh, bye. Oh, we got chicken. Is that crispy, juicy tender?